the host. Uh, welcome here to the Game Gathering 2023. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, you guys uh, chose to come back, come back uh, after uh, the last year. And I hope we will meet you again in the future. Uh, thanks to you all for joining me. Uh, I will introduce myself a little bit more. But first, I would like to tell you what you are about to hear or get more uh, into. Uh, the dark side of the leadership. Uh, we all know uh, many, many articles and watch many, many videos uh, based on what the leadership should be, what we as a leaders or our leaders that we are meant to follow should be, what should they do, what uh, great outcome it uh, brings if they do the job the way everyone or the world thinks it should be done. But for me, uh, it came on the heart, uh, on a hard, high price since uh, something and my current experience and also things that I will be talking about came to me as an instant, as a thunderstruck. And I find myself in a spot that uh, I wasn't prepared for some of them. And that's why I came out with this idea to bring you not only the glamorous part of being a leader or follow a great leader that you might be or you might follow in your uh, companies or studios, but also about the parts that are not that glamorous. And people that are following their leaders might forget about or even might not even know that there are parts that like that. And leaders must uh, find a way how to handle them. So can I get it? So uh, as I said, I would like to introduce uh, a little bit more proper myself. I'm uh, Filip Polasek. I'm uh, currently CPO, Chief Product Officer at Pixel Federation Studio. We are headquartered here in Bratislava, Slovakia. We are a company of around 300 people. And we are making uh, around 40 mil a year with uh, several very uh, successful games. My dear friend uh, Gustav had a talk uh, uh, just prior to me in the second hall, and he mentioned one of them, it's uh, Train Station and uh, Train Station 2, and the third to the party is uh, Digit Adventure. Uh, my background, I have uh, something more than eight years of managerial experience, all came from the entertainment industry. Before gaming, I was uh, in uh, I was working as a casino manager for a poker room. i not uh, proud of that, but I am a gaming junkie. I play many, many hours a day from my child years to, to this day. Uh, as a child, I was playing more uh, real-time real strategy games like Command & Conquer, uh, Warcraft, Starcraft, and all that stuff. These days, with uh, wife and three lovely kids, uh, it's more like uh, Clash Royale on the five-minute toilet break. <laughs> and this is uh, me uh, on a company photo, and this reminds me how I do not look want to look like uh, when I'm at the meeting and when I'm trying to uh, make something work. When I'm in this stage, I know it's shit. Okay, so what we are going to hear about today, uh, what is it? What is the dark side of the leadership from my point of view? It's everything that you are not, uh, it's everything that is not the first on your list when somebody says leadership. It's everything that's negative, it's everything that's hard, it's everything that you might not connect to the leadership and mostly the successful leadership and uh, to be fair, most of that is uh, connected to leaders that are in executive positions, like when they are need to make also decisions. With that, uh, I will try to show you several 
possibilities how to handle several of them and uh, it all will be based on my uh, soul and very recent experience uh, when I And also the results will be uh, part of the things that I think that might help you or help you understand why your leaders sometimes uh, feel like they're not doing what you will expect from them. As I mentioned, uh, I will cover it also with a very recent experience. Uh, to be honest, similar to that and to make it uh, make it somehow uh, constant uh, we will talk very right unpopular decisions what else firing people correct taking responsibility and sorry from the back row please again Also, the difference if uh, female is uh, higher ranked than the male. Sometimes males are not good with coping with that situation. Yes, uh, that might be a consequence of not doing the popular decisions. Then you are start, uh, and you might. Uh, start losing your trust uh, or the trust of your team and that makes everything even harder. Yes? Delegation. That's, from my point of view, to be honest, I will say that that's the, one of the pros of being a leader because you can build your trust with the team by delegating more senior uh, tasks on them. But I can see what you mean also. Yes. Yes. Great. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, all, all the ideas you, you mentioned are here, difficult decisions and tasks. Uh, sometimes leaders in executive position need to make decisions that even when thinking about what the decision should be, you know that whatever decision you will pass on, it won't be before. Being a good leader doesn't mean you have to uh, please everyone. I would say the exact opposite to being a good leader means you need to know when you can please someone and when you need to deny them. For example, uh, imagine you have uh, two very similar uh, colleagues or team members and one of them is more eager for uh, compensation and uh, he or she asks you to for a raise if they are not uh, making different job and different delivery, you either need to raise both of them or neither of them. And if you choose to raise neither of them, it won't be a popular decision from the one who asked for the raise. Angry co-workers, if you deny a raise, I guarantee you the other side won't be a happy one. Uh, was also mentioned here, taking responsibility. 
it's very hard to take responsibility for uh, any kind of uh, unfortunate event or any kind of uh, mistake. We are uh, raised to to perceive ourselves or to show ourselves as uh, people who are not making any, people who are perfect, people who are knowing absolutely everything of everything. And that's not very easy place to say that, okay, I make shitty decision and I need to take responsibility for it. Even more that the higher the executive role, the higher the cost of your mistakes. So let's say that you come to a conclusion that uh, some of your your team members is not performing. You end up firing him or her, and it seem in come to an end with your project failing miserably, then you need to step up and know how to to handle that. Yes, I made a, this decision and it led to the disaster. Long hours. Uh, in Pixel Federation, we deeply care about the and uh, how to handle it. And once again, I'll welcome you to show your ideas on how do you think you can mitigate or handle the things that uh, were said here, that you mentioned, or that they were written in the slide before. Yes, that can be a, can be a solution, but I'm not sure it's the best one. <laughs> yes. Exactly. That's one thing that uh, definitely helps you go through to be transparent in in the way you can be because there are some uh, uh, information that you cannot share at some point to to everyone, but more you communicate with your team, with your company, more thing you can uh, try to try to explain, and uh, very high probability that uh, all the ideas, all the process behind your decision will be understood. Anything else? Uh, there were two ideas. Uh, one was be manage expectations. That's uh, alongside with the communication, but yeah, very, very, uh, uh, very. Uh, sorry, 
uh, very good idea. And they were be comprehensive. Uh, yes, uh, if you set your goal, uh, you as a leader is expected that you have some kind of a vision. I will talk about that later on. Uh, and that's probably what uh, you might meant that being a comprehensive in a way that uh, you are you ah, I see thank you uh, yes one thing that uh, is uh, probably a little bit hard in uh, our industry is that this uh, very rigid system will slow you down in the development. So you, you have to look for a balance in order to know how, how further into the description of who needs to do what and when uh, is effective, but very true. Any idea? Any other ideas? The last one, for example. Yes, uh, that's a combination of uh, trying to have a good communication with the team and also taking the responsibility. Uh, I will start with the the, the vision uh, I mentioned earlier. If you are joining any leadership or leading position, I suggest from my own experience to, to have a vision. Uh, the best case scenario is if you prepare your vision, what you want to achieve on the role, it doesn't need to be a, a huge executive role. It might start as a lead of three developers in in charge of uh, delivering uh, uh, a feature. But always set yourself a vision, what you want to achieve, in what time frame, and to show it to your, your other leadership or friends in the company that might help you and give you a feedback. And of course, if you have that uh, opportunity, to your superiors in order to have them uh, buy in on your vision. If this can happen, you can follow and use this vision that you uh, you made as a, as a cornerstone of every tough consideration that you might face. Because if you consider your vision and become to a, and came to a conclusion that your tough decision is in order, following that vision there is a very, very high probability that you will be right. It's something like uh, Occam's razor. If you are following your vision that you set and your tough decision follows that vision, the most probable correct answer is probably true. And as was already mentioned, be transparent and communicate with the team. This is very, very easy to do and can help you a lot in order to handle the dark side of the leadership problem. This is not that easy. Accept the possibility that you might fail. If you can enhance this possibility, it will free you from anxiety. When I was uh, accepting the offer for CPO, I, after deliberate thinking, I asked for only one, one perk, and that was that if at any point co-founders, board, my, my peers, or my subordinates, or me, myself, Will any one of these come to a conclusion that I'm not fit for the role anymore? I just want to get back to a producer and get some project. If 
possible in the in the future in the company because I know that I was going to something that I have no experience before and I accept the possibility that I might fail I still might like I'm there for six months now and there's no one in the world guaranteeing me that I will be good at this job in one year time span and with that I start working the best I can for now it works but I'm not afraid of failing and thus far I'm not in some constant anxiety of what might happen tomorrow try find the time for an activity that will ease your mind from work uh, being it sports being it uh, arts uh, walks talk with your family or or playing with the dog cat whatever watching a movie try to find enough time throughout the week to ease your mind from work even if you are on a crunch even if you are in a crisis you need to get this done because if your mind will get slaughtered by the by the ideas by the by the wrongs in the company in your work by the problems you are facing you will be very very unlikely to find the correct solution that you yourself will be happy with okay so that brings us to this is another part I was mentioning at the very beginning my recent experience in Pixel Federation with these unpleasant parts uh, about one and a half year ago I took over a new team it was a switch of uh, two producers with, within two games uh, the team was struggling the project was behind I was given the opportunity and uh, trust to try to find for a better solution to steer it uh, the better way. So first I think, okay, let's identify, identify some uh, bottlenecks in the project pipeline, some processes that might be optimized. And of course, team members that are not very effective it was the first tough part to went to long-term uh, employees and give them a critical feedback more so that uh, one exact team member was not very very fond of that like it might be because he never get that critical feedback before but it was one of my toughest conversation that I had with an employee not because it was like yelling or something but he was a long-term employee you need to deliver a message to show him what you think that are uh, reasons that he's underperforming and he's just not getting it because you're the first who ever talks to me like that you're the first who is mentioning something like that battle of worlds he's that he's long-term employee who is doing everything right and me with my little vision after two months on the pro new project knowing that he's just not doing enough few months passed and I had to terminate a cooperation with him from my point of view um, it was not about him uh, uh, being unable to deliver what I thought the project needs it was more about an inconsistency of his delivery and that opened the floodgates 
I came and some to some people I am enemy of the states because I was that uh, that brave to terminate a long-term relationship with uh, an employee. We are talking 10 plus years in the company. To him, I'm a psychopath. To some other, I'm on a war path of firing as many people as I can, which is untrue. And that's something that caught me off guard. Like all this, uh, all these negative information collided in a span of 12 hours that get to me. It wasn't a very good sleep in a couple of days. But after a while, when I processed all the the feedback from exit uh, exit sessions, all feedback from people, or the the gossips that I tried to mitigate and try to talk to people that might be uh, scared because of them, I came to I came to this. And I still, as I stand here, I'm 100% sure that terminating that cooperation was a correct choice. Because with him, the project would not be moving forward. It might not still be enough, but I'm not regretting it because it was with my vision. Well, after that, let's have uh, some uh, conclusion. So uh, there are little to few things that I think that it might be interesting for you as a conclusion. Uh, you will have tough thoughts and decisions to make. You cannot avoid it or leaders you follow, cannot avoid it. If you are avoiding it, you are not doing anything, uh, everything okay. Being a good leader is not making everyone happy. As the, the scenario with the race was mentioned, being a good leader is means also taking into consideration other uh, other variables, like even someone who is not talking to you about the race. If you want to be a fair leader, you need to consider it many, many variables outside of the scope of the conversation that is happening right now. Sometimes denying a request is the best possible action you as a leader can, can make. And also, if it does not look like at the point like it try to get back to those points in a in a several weeks and try to figure out where the route you choose you choose have come something that is not very pleasant but be the last to take credit try to Try to have your teamwork and your team members in the spotlight. Try to talk about them when the job they did is something that you are talking about with your superiors or your peers. Instead of we make something or I managed to have my team do this, say, Joanne did it or Michael and Peter set uh, through the weekend and delivered on the Monday. 
on the other hand, be the first to take the responsibility. From my experience, it's very hard at the beginning, but every, every mistake you take responsibility for will make you stronger and it, this will become much easier for you to do. And the outcome will be that people will gladly follow you because they know that if you make a shitty decision, you will take the responsibility and find all the means necessary to make it right. And as I mentioned multiple times already, re-evaluate, re but do not doubt yourself. That's why you need to have something as a vision or a goal or call it whatever you want. But you need to have your cornerstone that you are building everything from. And that's it. Thank you very much for uh, listening. And I will be gladly if you can invite you to any questions and answers. Okay. Sure. Uh, we had some kind of a... So the question is how yeah, okay. to let somebody go from your company politely when you're a manager and chief? Uh, and also uh, with uh, consideration of the years that uh, they have uh, provided service. Uh, we had uh, training for this and the most uh, appealing idea for me was that do not try to win. It's not a contest. You are making a very big change in someone's life, not in a, uh, in a, a life or death situation. But yeah, we have our. We might have families. The the person he or she mm, will probably have uh, some some uh, mortgages or any other financial uh, uh, financial issues that uh, he or she needs to to address uh, every month and uh, thus far do not try to win it's not about you winning for yourself or for the company uh, try to be transparent again uh, what are the reasons that uh, you have come to a decision to terminate the cooperation. Uh, try to uh, and try from my experience this last couple of months uh, try to be honest from the very first sentence at that the last meeting. You mean, uh, the question was if uh, project managers or leaders in executive roles should uh, communicate these to the team, right? Okay, uh, you mean communicate the determination of the, the, the contract? I got it. Uh, we 
we have a discussion between uh, several friends uh, within the company on how to approach this. Uh, and uh, we chose the path of saying only the inevitable, that it was uh, someone's decision, like very specific. For in this case, it was my decision. Uh, and in order of firm now letting someone go, it's never a happy reason. Like it's never the case that, oh yeah, you're the best worker here, but you need to go. Like that's not gonna happen. So there are some bad things that happen and we have given the opportunity to the team that we will not discuss them on their own, but if anyone asks, we will share the more specific info. So it was about them again to choose what they want to know, what they want to hear about their friend, their long-term coworker. But one thing needs to be done. You need to, to address it as soon as possible to the team. Like it's better to uh, for them to hear it from you than from the gossips. Welcome. There were several other hands, but uh, I'm not sure who else. So please, can you rejoin? Yes. Thank you, but it's not about it. Okay, so the question is that what's the biggest difference uh, that came with the different uh, levels of leadership? I would say that the amount of responsibility to the firm and to the number of people in the company. When I was a uh, producer at the given project, it was about 30 people, now it's 150. So for me, the scope of the responsibility that my bad decisions might cause not 30 people to lose their jobs, but 150, and as we are speaking about the production, that's the whole firm, because supports, operations and all won't be lasting long if we will be not delivering games. So for me, this is the heaviest burden that I, that changed. And also, uh, the, the amount of uh, communication that you need to tackle in order to to be keep yourself a transparent. You're welcome. Yes. Yes, uh, the the question or a suggestion was that uh, it might be a better way for use a burger method of uh, giving a feedback that gives something good, then something bad, and then end it with something good. Uh, honestly, I was a big fan of this method in the past. However, I switched uh, for a very particular reason and the reason was that, uh, for my opinion, too many times it ended up in uh, uh, miscommunication or misunderstanding from the recipient. Of course, I keep that, that it might be my bad communication to them. So it might work for you much better than it works for me. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying the reason why I chose to switch from the burger feedback method to more direct uh, is this. So uh, finishing firing on the note of a good feedback 
from my point of view, uh, leaves some kind of a bad taste. Like, yeah, you said I was I was good, I was doing this right. You fired me and then say, okay, here are some benefits. Me personally, I wouldn't like to go out like that. But again, it might be because I'm not good with using that method and probably it's the best for everyone to choose and follow their path that they can uh, deliver the message. Totally agree. Uh, if someone uh, didn't hear uh, very well, uh, the main idea is to know who you are firing and what's the probably best thing that can deliver your message. For example, in <clears throat> America, there's a culture that works very good with the burger method. However, in uh, East, Eastern Europe, it might be not so popular and not so functional and I totally agree with this and that might be the case because since we are a, a Slovak based uh, firm we are not having mm, too many foreigners here uh, we tried but uh, it's very hard to find uh, foreigners and be able to uh, to provide everything they might expect from more multicultural big cities. Also, our best shot with uh, my very dear friend, uh, Tommy from Finland, uh, was somehow killed by the coronavirus pandemic when we were like just stuck in home. And when you are when you are coming to a new city and you're trying to making friendships and to fit into the community and you're stuck in home, you can be stuck home back in Finland. like. It was very hard. Okay, so finally, sorry, <laughs> please. Okay, so uh, it was a question about uh, the firing process. Uh, it considered of two parts. The first one is uh, if I came to a conclusion of uh, terminating the cooperation uh, throughout the project, uh, how I came to the decision and what were the steps to, to uh, replace the guy or trying to mitigate the impact on the set project and the second part was uh, more on uh, how to replace replace him oh, okay so uh, uh, it wasn't a decision made in a uh, in few days or several weeks uh, I follow a process that we call a uh, shake. So I came to the employee, have a list of uh, my points that uh, 
he should be doing differently that uh, will impact the project uh, much more in a positive way. And after that, uh, for a few months, it was very good. It was great. He was perfing, performing even better than what uh, he was performing before I came to the project. And unfortunately, what I was, what I just starting to uh, to notice was that he was slowly getting back to the sub average performance he was delivering before, and that was the inconsistency that I was very afraid of. And also, what makes a great impact on the decision was that uh, at several points I find I, f I found the uh, his uh, decisions on the project uh, contraindicative to what the project needed, and that was not. Uh, about uh, him not pushing a uh, project forward, but from my point of view, it was pulling it backwards. And to the second part, uh, changing someone uh, on an ongoing project is a very tough decision because you don't know if you get a replacement, you don't know what quality of a replacement you might have. and. It's very difficult, and I will get back to the, the the reason, and that was that I came to a conclusion that even without him, without the replacement, him not uh, pulling the project backwards and not stalling any other uh, executive decisions is enough benefit for the project. Yes, because it had a uh, very bad impact on the team. Like I needed him, exactly him, to push the other guys and to try to elevate their efficiency. Those guys who were uh, in his uh, smaller department. And since he was not delivering this, all the other guys were thinking that their suboptimal uh, delivery is okay. So I also have a question. Go on. It's more personal one. For example, when you had crisis times, perhaps you had a feeling that someone else could do better on this position from your team, perhaps from your colleagues. So the question, in fact, is how to not to lose faith in yourself during crisis times. How not to go in yourself and try to accept your fault. Um, to be honest, uh, I think about this even if there is no crisis, because I came to a state of mind that this thinking is making me better. Because if I find someone that I think that this person, he or she, is able to do and deliver a better job than myself, I'm trying to see what are those things, what are the traits of, that peop of those people, and try to learn from them, talk with them, try to get better version of myself in order to be a better lead for them. And the second part is like, it's all the circle back to the my goal. If I'm okay with the goal and also very, very helpful if uh, my superiors are okay with the goal, set goal, and it may change, it may change in an instant, but as long as we are on the same page with what I am trying to deliver, then I'm quite confident that no one else is able to provide it better and build it better than myself. Because if there will be someone else, he or she will have a different vision, different goal. OK, I see. Thank you. You're welcome. Wonderful attitude. Any more questions? Ah, okay.
Uh, yes, great question. Uh, for the others, uh, people are very different. Each one of us is different, and uh, we are uh, responding to the very same thing very differently. And as I already mentioned, that uh, the employee was able to provide better and to work much better for some uh, amount of time. And the question was if I considered all the other parts that are uh, uh, parts of our delivery, like the psychology, what might be the outside of the company reasons why he might uh, get back to the suboptimal. Am I doing it right? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, disclaimer, I'm not a psychologist, so all the ideas and all the thinking behind uh, these parts of the possibilities that might uh, cause some kind of uh, behavior are very, I would say, uh, like, like very uh, subjective from my point of view. And I considered several reasons for those that might be it. And I'm very sorry, and I'll try to talk about it more, but I won't go into much detail in order to protect the, the person. Uh, it was uh, not a decision based on my sole observation. It was a decision based on uh, collecting feedback from many, many people within the company since he was a long-term employee. Many people work with him, many people uh, have uh, successes and failures with him. And collecting this, I came to a conclusion that we tried everything that we think might help. It helped for a little period of time, but it wasn't enough. And since we, I personally cannot come to any other idea that I will try, I chose to terminate the contract. You're welcome. So if you will come up with any questions later, you can always find Philip in the Expo Zone. For now, let's once again thank him for his experience and for his presentation. Thank you for having me.